Hello everyone, this is Michelle Stelling with the National Association of Digital Scrapbookers, NAODS.com. In this lesson, we're going to talk about the introduction to digital scrapbooking. Now, digital scrapbooking has kind of taken the world by storm in the last several years. Um, a lot of people were traditional scrappers, and now they're con kind of converting over to traditional scrap. Bookers. So basically, we're going to, in this layout, we're going to create a postcard for Valentine's Day since it's right around Valentine's Day when I'm taping this. So let's go ahead and get started. It's really just comprised of a digi kit uh, made by Snickerdoodle Designs by Karen and a little um, cluster frame. They're called cluster frames. So let's go ahead and get started with this. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and find a really nice background for my postcard. And this one is created by um, Snickerdoodle Designs by Karen.com and it's Sporty Sass. It's her Sporty Sass um, design package. Now, this comes in a 12 by 12, but what we're going to do is we're going to reduce it down to a 5 by 7. That's a, a pretty standard photo size, and it would be perfect for a postcard. So I'm going to go over and take my crop tool, and instead of no restrictions, I'm going to go ahead and pull down one of my defaults here, which would be a 5 by 7. Now my width is going to be 7, and my height is going to be 5, so I'm going to go ahead and switch these two around. I'm going to come out here click and drag around the area that I want to create as my background and you can move this around to wherever you feel most comfortable and what looks best for your layout and then I'm going to click on the check mark. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in just a little bit so you can see the little pattern on there. Remember you can do one to one ratio, fit to screen, fill screen, or print size. Next I'm going to go find a nice little background slice of paper. So instead of actually cutting these like traditional scrapbookers usually do, I'm going to go ahead and open up another piece of paper. This one looks kind of interesting to me. And I'm just going to go ahead and take a slice of it out of there. I'm just going to kind of guess where I want it to be, and I can always trim it down once I get it inside of my layout. Next I'll take my Move tool and just go ahead and move that in, and that's a V on the keyboard for a shortcut. And I can shrink this down if I want to by going to one of the corners and shrinking it down in size. And I'm not going to uh, make the size just set in stone yet because I still want to bring in another uh, cluster frame that will help me decide the size of this background here. So next I will go into Open. And this is also from uh, Karen's line of uh, Sporty Sass and these are so super cool. These are called little cluster frames and you can check out DigiKits all over the internet. Just surf the internet and see what you can come up with. So this is another little pretty piece by Karen and I'm just going to pull this into my layout. And as you notice on the right hand side you are creating layers. I'm just going to um, make this a little bit smaller. Now I need to have a nice picture in the background to make this pop and so I'm going to bring in Aspen introduce you to Aspen and take my move tool, drag and drop it into my page. Now we have to be careful of the different layering um, what order the layers are in. So I'm just going to take and drag my layer right behind that cluster move the picture right behind the cluster frame. I need to rotate it just a bit and I'm going to make it just a bit larger. Now I don't recommend enlarging photos too much. Just a little bit is totally fine but um, you know you don't want to take a photo and enlarge it 200% because then the pixels get all messed up so be careful of that. Now I can go ahead in there and if I want to I can maybe make this a little bit smaller. I just want this to kind of fall right behind this area so it makes this cluster pop a little bit. Now you can put drop shadows on these clusters so if you go to the cluster layer over here to the right hand side and click on effects. We have all different kinds of styles in the drop shadow area. I'm just going to pick one that is already preset and go ahead and create that drop shadow for both of those layers that I just brought in. And that might be a little bit harsh but you can go in there back to your layers panel, double click on the FX and change the opacity and whatnot if you if you need to. But we're just doing a really quick, simple postcard. So um, in some of the next versions of the digital scrapbooking series, I will kind of go in more depth of what else you can do as a digi scrapper. 
Now over here to the right, since it is right around Valentine's Day when I'm taping this, I'm just going to put a little nice little blurb, Happy Valentine's Day, Love Aspen, and then we're good to go. So go and grab my text tool. Now I probably want to use a pink color. The, the text is going to go to the right hand side here. So down here I'm going to click on the color and I don't want it to be green. See this little color wheel down here to the right hand side of this little panel that's popped up? If you click on that, that's going to bring up another additional palette. Now you can pick colors from this slider and come in here and pick a different color if you want to. But what I normally suggest is to go out into your layout and once you go out into your layout you're going to see this little bitty eyedropper. Go ahead and click somewhere in your layout to pull a color from your layout. It just makes it more appealing and if your color scheme is the same throughout your layout it just looks so much better graphically. I'm then going to go ahead and go to my very top layer and then click one time and I'm going to type out Happy Valentine's Day. And I don't think I have the right font selected here but that's okay. Alright, yeah this font definitely is not going to work with this. It's a fun font. I don't know if you can see that. I'll zoom in a little bit here. Um, but it is called Monster Paparazzi. I'm going to probably go with my basic impact. And it's still very, very hard to see. But if we put a light drop shadow on that, I bet you it's going to look pretty good. So let's go back to our effects panel. And we are using version 11, by the way. And put a soft edge drop shadow on there. That makes it pop a lot. Now I can go in there and kind of play with typography. We'll have a typography session um, in the future, but for now I'm just going to go ahead and keep it fairly simple. I'm mixing some upper and lower case. Maybe I do happy and all upper and then Valentine's Day in lower and then, I mean Valentine's in lower. And you get the idea. We could even go in there and highlight happy and maybe make that a little bit larger by going down and um, enlarging our point size here. Maybe day is going to be bigger as well. And then I also have to mess around with the letting, so I'm going to push that down. So what I do is I click on my mouse and push it to the right. See how it's making that letting push a little bit more. Okay, then down at the bottom I think I'm just going to put Love Aspen. So I'm just going to go ahead back to my Layers panel, make sure I'm on the top layer, click one time, and I am going to do some kind of a frilly type of font. I think that monster one was kind of cool. Let's just see what that looks like. That looks pretty cool. However, I can't really read it very well. So let's try going back in and taking our color for our text. Again, I don't really want to pick for my color swatches, so I'm just going to go ahead and pick up the color picker and I'm going to go into my layout and pull out a green. It needs to be a really deep green so let's kind of scroll around here to see what we've got. Maybe a green from this leaf and then once I get the family of greens I can just come in here and kind of scroll or you know click down so it's a deeper green and that also works. Okay and so I like that a lot better. I'm going to double click on the hand tool so then you can go back and perfect it a little bit if you wanted to. You can kind of mess around with the size of the text here and, and moving um, pieces around, maybe even moving this over just a bit. I'm just kind of nudging it over to the left hand side and maybe taking this over just a bit as well. But you get the idea. This is a 5 by 7, a little postcard. You could even, for Digi Scrappers, since you guys are all so creative, what you could do is you could print this out at a regular, you know, place, Walmart or Walgreens or whatever, and then make a card out of it as well. You know, take your um, glue or, or tape and then take your card stock and make a, a nice little card out of this as well. Hope you enjoyed this session. Again, this is Michelle from the National Association of Digital Scrapbookers, NAODS.com. Go ahead and take a look at our site. Go to free webinars, and there are some webinars coming up in the next few days, so go ahead and click and sign up for them. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.